Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. We do thank you for joining us for another Central Jersey Bible Institute Encouragement Series session. Uh, truly, it is a blessing, amen, to be found uh, at any opportunity to be able to sit at the Lord's wonderful table, to sup with him, uh, to receive of all of the wonderful things that he has set aside for, just for us. Uh, this evening, praise the Lord, our instructor, amen, no stranger to any of us, is Elder Curtis Bracey, amen. But uh, before we turn the service over into his hands, uh, let us go before the throne of grace and petition that the Lord will bless us with his presence this evening. Uh, in Jesus' name, let every heart pray. Uh, Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love and thank you. We're asking, Lord, that you would have mercy upon us all. We, Well, God, again, thank you for an opportunity to be able to come before you. And Lord, we thank you for being the God that you are, Lord, uh, the loving God that you are. And you are being so willing to uh, administer unto us that which we need to grow thereby to be able to stand before you and be regarded as vessels unto honor. We love and thank you immensely. We ask that you would bless your manservant this evening, that he may be sensitive to the move of your Holy Ghost, that he may know in which direction the wind is blowing, to receive from you the loaves of fish and the, uh, the loaves of bread and the fish, to be able to minister unto your people. We pray, Lord God, that we walk from here so much more uh, full, uh, so much more stronger and anointed than before we got here. We're asking that you would look upon every household represented on this call and those uh, that are here, those that are on their way, those that could make it, that you'll bless us all. Lord, please hear our prayer requests, supply our needs naturally and spiritually, make our homes harmonious for your Holy Ghost to move around in. And uh, Lord, God bless us and our families and ultimately keep us rapture ready. We love and thank you immensely in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We do pray, amen and amen. Amen. Again, we say praise the Lord unto you all. Amen. And giving honor unto the Lord who is the head of my life. Praise the Lord. I also like to acknowledge, amen, the pastor of the house, as well as the president of the Central Jersey Bible Institute and the person of Elder John Betts uh, and um, uh, his uh, lovely wife, uh, First Lady Loria Betts. Uh, we uh, um, and always like to uh, regard, amen, uh, the mother of the house, Mother Ida Harrell. And we would like to regard, amen, the board of the Central Jersey Bible Institute. Uh, we say praise the Lord unto you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And without further ado, I'd like to turn the service over into the hands of our instructor for the evening. And the person, praise the Lord, of Elder Curtis Bracey. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, sir. Sing your hands. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on tonight. Uh, before I go any further, I just want to make sure, can everyone hear me? Amen. Yes, we can, sir. Amen. Okay. All right. All right. Y'all sound good. We give honor to the pastor of the Greater Refuge Church of Christ, Pastor Betts. We thank God for you. We give honor to First Lady Betts. We give honor to Elder Bonet, uh, Elder Lynch, and to all the people of God on tonight. It's just good to be back. I always look forward to coming and sharing the word uh, with greater refuge. On tonight, the Lord has given us a word to instruct on tonight, and we're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to begin reading at verse three, and we're going to read all the way down to verse number nine. Second Corinthians chapter four, beginning at the third verse to the ninth verse, and I'm reading out of the King James Version. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, and earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power of God, of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, 
yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And the, our thought for tonight is I can't quit. I'm a kingdom carrier. And you know me, I'm going to talk back to me preacher. So I just need everybody to unmute yourself for the first time tonight and just say, I'm a kingdom carrier. I'm a kingdom, kingdom, kingdom carrier. God be the glory. Hallelujah. I'm a kingdom carrier. One of the most least talked about topics in the church today is the kingdom of God. We don't talk about it enough. We don't talk about it a lot because we have reduced the kingdom of God to just eschatological matters or end time events. But we're gonna see on tonight that in the word of God, the power and the manifestation of the kingdom of God is happening right now. While we are waiting to get to the kingdom of heaven one day, the kingdom of God is active in the earth through the lives of the people of God. So understand something that we're in class tonight, we're getting instructed tonight, and this is why it's important to read the word of God for yourself, because when you study the word of God for yourself, you begin to learn that maybe there are some things I overlooked. Now, when we talk about the gospel, we often refer to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Paul talked about that in 1 Corinthians 15, about the gospel, the good news that Christ died and he was buried and he got up on the third day with all power in his hand. But let me say to you that prior to the death of Christ, he had a gospel that he was preaching. And when Jesus Christ came to the earth, the Bible lets us know that Jesus Christ came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now understand something that prior to Jesus coming, there was a man named John the Baptist. And John the Baptist comes on the scene in between Malachi and the book of Matthew. After the book of Malachi, we went through 400 years of silence. We went through 400 years where we did not hear what heaven had to say. And after 400 years of silence, John the Baptist comes preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if you grew up in church uh, for a long time, you're used to hearing that term, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when we hear that, we just reduce it down to he's coming back again. But when John preached, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he was not referring to the end times. He was referring to the fact that he was preparing the way for Christ to come to the earth. Are you with me so far? When Jesus Christ came to the earth, John was what we would call the hype man. John was preparing the people for the king that would come to earth. Lord, help me tonight. John told them to repent, which in the Greek, Repent means to change your mind. In other words, if you're going to expect the king's arrival, you have to prepare and change your mind from thinking carnally or fleshly to thinking spiritually. That means that in order for the king to get in close proximity to me, I have to change my mind. And oftentimes we don't talk about the word repent. The enemy hates that word because repent means I change my mind and I turn away from sin. Because understand something is that when I change my mind and I start thinking the way Christ would have me to think, then I start thinking like a kingdom citizen. Oh, how many people do you know who are in the church, who are in the body of Christ, but still thinking as if they're still under the dominion of Satan. Speaking of dominion, 
Understand something that when Jesus Christ came on the earth, he came to let us know that he has dominion over Satan. Not just Satan, but Satan's kingdom. We have to understand that. We have to get back to preaching that because there are two kingdoms. One is a kingdom of God and the other is the kingdom of darkness. And you have to understand when the Lord Jesus saved you, he didn't just save you from sin. He didn't just save you from hell. When the Lord saved you, the Bible says he snatched you out of darkness and he translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. That's Bible. That's Colossians chapter one and verse 13. That is Colossians chapter one and verse 13. In the book of Colossians, Paul reminds us that Jesus is God beyond the shadow of a reasonable doubt. Without controversy, Jesus is God. In Jesus dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Colossians, Paul reminds us that he purchased us with his blood. Now, if Jesus is God and God don't bleed because God is a spirit, how can he purchase us with his blood? Well, God created a body. God manifested himself in that body and the purpose of God coming in the flesh so that blood can be shed for without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. But in Colossians, he also says, God translated me. This is important to know. This is important to know. Even though I still live in this world, I'm in the spiritual world, I'm translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of of Christ. I'm translated from one kingdom to another, and the Bible lets us know, according to the Greek, that God had to snatch me out. Lord have mercy, because if we were to tell the truth, God snatched us out of some things that we were contemplating about leaving, that we weren't ready to leave, that we weren't through having fun yet, but because God called you to be a kingdom carrier, he had to snatch you out of the kingdom of darkness to bring you into his marvelous light. All right, second time I'm asking you to unmute yourself. Just unmute yourself and let the devil know God snatched me out of his kingdom. God snatched me out of his kingdom. You need to know that. You need to know that. You need to know that. That means when the devil thought you would stay bound in his kingdom, God snatched you out. That means he yanked you out. That means he was not going to leave you in a fallen state. Hallelujah to God. So the Bible says he's translated us. Now, wait a minute. Let's take our time here. God translated us. That's why John said, repent. Because in order for me to be transformed by the renewing of my mind, check this out, I'm transformed because I'm translated. Oh, we're we going to make the Bible talk tonight. I'm transformed by the renewing, the renewing, the new birth. I'm transformed by the renewing of my mind. And I can only renew my mind because I've been translated. When God translates you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Christ, you have to start thinking and transforming your mind to think like a kingdom citizen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's, that, that's where the church is having a battle because we know how to have church, but we don't know how to have kingdom. We know how to dance and shout, but we have not yet learned how to have the manifestation of the kingdom. And this may sound foreign tonight. <laughs> this may sound like I'm speaking a different language. And in fact, I am. I'm speaking the language of the kingdom. Lord have mercy. That's why we go through things differently from the world because we are kingdom citizens. Lord have mercy. That's why I don't sorrow as the world does 
like someone who has no hope because I have a hope beyond the grave because I am a kingdom citizen. So John preached that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when you study that in its original etymology, it means the kingdom of God is near. And if you go deeper, it means that the kingdom of God has manifested himself in the person of the king. Lord have mercy. In other words, I'm just trying to tell you that Jesus Christ was the embodiment of the kingdom of God because the kingdom was near because the king was coming. So when John said, repent for the kingdom is at hand, he was letting them know that there's a king coming. And even though I baptize you with water, he's coming after me and he's mightier than I. Why is he mightier than I, John? Because he's the king. I'm an ambassador for the king, but the king will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, somebody thank God for the Holy Ghost. So Jesus comes along and when John sees the king, he sees the king coming and he says, behold, the Lamb of God. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I need to talk to all my Bible scholars and all my Greek and Hebrew people and all my Christological and theological folks. John saw the king and called the king the Lamb. Wait a minute, let's go over that. John the Baptist saw the king and he called the king, not my cousin, not my friend, but the Lamb of God. Now, th that seems disrespectful to call the king of kings and the Lord of lords uh, uh, the Lamb of God. But you got to understand, our king is different from other kings. Other kings are preoccupied and concerned with their status and their praise. But this king was willing to leave status, Lord have mercy, to come down in the posture of a lamb to be the ultimate sacrifice. This king, he didn't just come to, to be a king, he came to die because he was the only king who could pay the price for you and I. I'm going somewhere. I'm just setting the stage so far. He called the king the lamb. Called him the lamb of God because blood had to be shed to give me access into the kingdom. Lord have mercy. Blood had to be shed to give me access into the kingdom. Lord have mercy. I said blood had to drip and drop for me to get access into the kingdom. The death the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. But wait a minute. When we preach the gospel, we just can't leave it at the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus because that is the means to which he introduces us to the kingdom. Because he told Nicodemus, except a man is born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter there, go into the kingdom, the king's domain. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So understand that he died. He died and dying makes him my savior. But the problem is, is that we are just satisfied to have Jesus as our savior. Churches are filled with people who confess them as Savior. Even people that don't go to church, you talk to them on the bus or in the street or walking down the street, they'll tell you, oh, Jesus is my Savior. But can I tell you, hear me good, if he's only Savior, the devil is happy that you only see him as Savior. Lord have mercy. Because in our church theology, we just leave him as Savior. But in the kingdom, he died as my Savior, but he got up because he was Lord. I'm going to say that again. He died to prove he's my Savior. He got up to prove he's my Lord. You got Bible for that, Bracey? Yes, I do. Acts 2.36 says, the same Jesus whom you crucified, God have made him both Lord and Christ. That's why we baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because we're reminding you when you go down in his name, you're going down in the name of the king because he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
And Jesus came after John was in prison. Jesus went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. That's in Matthew 4 and 23. That's in Mark chapter 1 and 15. In fact, in Luke chapter 10, in Matthew chapter 10 and Luke chapter 9, when Jesus sends the 12 and the 70 out, he tells them to go and preach and say the kingdom of God is at hand. And then he says, after you preach the kingdom, heal the sick raise the dead because healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils is a reminder that the kingdom of God is advancing. Every time you get healed from something incurable, that's a sign that God's kingdom is still at work. Every time God allows you to go through pain and not lose your mind, that's a sign that the kingdom of God is still at work. Every time you can make it from day to day with the money you make bi-weekly, it's not even enough to keep you for six months, but God God makes a way because he is the God of the kingdom. And he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. To seek the kingdom of God is to seek the king. David said, one thing that I've desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in in the house of the Lord forever. Now stay with me. To dwell in the house of the Lord forever. But David wrote that under the Old Testament. But I still want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Y'all stay with me because we're about to have church in a minute. Jesus promised the disciples prior to Calvary. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, he said, there were many mansions, but I didn't know if he prepared the place yet. I didn't get any follow-up or I didn't get a call back until I went to Ephesians. And Paul said, not only do I have a mansion, he said, I have a reserved seat in the mansion. He said, because I'm seated in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Can, I want you to understand that you are seated right now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes, you may be in your living room right now watching. You may be in your bedroom right now watching. You may be sitting in the car on the way home from work watching, but in the spiritual realm, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, let me give you this analogy. When you come to church, sometimes you may be frustrated because somebody took your seat. But in the kingdom of heaven, you will never have to worry about somebody taking your seat because not only did he put your name in the book of life, he reserved you a seat. Can somebody unmute yourself and say, I have a reserved seat? I have a reserved seat. A reserve seat. I have a reserve seat. My grandmama would sing the song, long as I know I got a seat, Lord help me tonight, in the kingdom. That's, that's all right. That's all right. I got a reserve seat. And that's what the devil is mad at you about. He's mad at you because you have a reserve seat. And since he can't stop God, from reserving your seat. Check this out. Check this out. Don't go nowhere. He wants you to give up your seat and come back to the kingdom of darkness. Lord, help me teach tonight. Understand something that when Jesus died on the cross, he disarmed Satan, according to Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. He disarmed Satan of his authority over the believer. Hear me real good. Satan still has power, but he doesn't have authority. Lord have mercy. Understand that. Stay with me. The devil still has power, but he doesn't have authority. Let me try it this way. A man locked up in bars behind prison, he can beat up another prisoner because he has that physical power to do it, but he doesn't have a authority to get out of jail. Lord have mercy. But Satan, he lost his authority, and but he still has power because when Jesus got up out
about the grave, God highly exalted him and gave him a name above every name. Why do you think the devil fights the name of Jesus to the degree to which he fights it? Because he knows that every time he hears the name of Jesus, he hears the name of the king. And it's a reminder that since Jesus died, things won't be the same. Lord have mercy. So he wants to get you to leave the kingdom of Christ. He wants to get you to give up your seat. Lord, but I need I need some Rosa Parks saints tonight. I need some Rosa Parks saints tonight because if one woman can change the civil rights and change our world in the 50s, late 50s and 60s because she refused to give up her seat, just imagine how much more damage you can do to the kingdom of darkness if you just stay seated. Now, I know I got more than one person on this Zoom tonight. I need everybody on this Zoom tonight to unmute yourself and just Allah stay seated. Stay seated. Hell yeah, stay seated. Stay stay seated. seated. Oh God, stay seated, stay seated. Don't stay seated. I don't care how stay bad seated. you feel, don't lose your spot in the kingdom. Lord help me teach tonight. Now, nobody is worth you giving up a seat that's already reserved in the kingdom. Have you ever noticed that the more you try to get closer to God, the enemy will use something familiar, something that normally triggers you, something that normally makes you react. You left that job, got another job, and the spirit from the last job seemed to follow you because the devil wants to know your triggers. He wants to know what makes you tick. He knows your push buttons. So he'll try the same old tricks to get you frustrated, to make you think God's not on your side so that you can come back to the kingdom of darkness. Oh, but I've already tasted of the heavenly gift and I refuse to leave my seat over a moment's gratification. I heard somebody say your worst day with Jesus will be better than your best day without him. Even if I'm sick, I'm going to stay seated in the kingdom. Even if I'm frustrated, I'm going to stay seated in the kingdom. Even if they don't like me, I refuse to lose my space or my, my seat or my Oh, God, help me teach. In the, I don't know who God is talking to tonight, but he told me to tell you, stay seated. Stay seated, stay seated, stay seated. Hold your peace and God will fight your battle. Stay seated. You are seated in heavenly places. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door. Here go in the king. There go again. The king of the kingdom, the king of glory shall come in. Ooh. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Lord, have mercy. If you start talking, God will shut up. But if you shut up and let him fight your battle, God will start talking. Well. Lord, help me teach tonight. So that's the thing. He can't make me leave the kingdom unless he uses something in my flesh. I'm going somewhere tonight. I haven't forgotten my text. He cannot make me leave the kingdom until he can use something that I'm used to. And I heard James say, every man is tempted. When he's drawn away by his own lust, it is enticed. Now, wait a minute. When James wrote that passage, he wasn't talking to the sinner. He was talking to the believer because he wanted the believer to know Although you're in the kingdom of God, the enemy can't do too much damage to you because you're in God's witness protection program, Lord help me. For the Holy Ghost is what makes me a witness. I'm a witness while I'm in the witness protection program of God. Lord, help me teach tonight. Uh, and so the enemy can't do too much to me because I'm on the other side uh, of my pain. I'm on the other side. I'm, I'm on the winning side. I'm a conqueror even while I'm in it because I'm on the side of the king. So he says, I know what I'll do. He said, I'll use something in your past to get you to leave the kingdom. I'll use a hurt out of your past. Mm. 
Oh, God is going to destroy yokes tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I, 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 I'll use a rumor when you was in high school. I'll, I'll let you run into somebody while you're at work on your lunch break who, who really traumatized you and left you for dead. This is the devices of Satan. I want you to know the devil's a dirty fighter. He's fighting you not just because you're saved. He's fighting you because you switched kingdoms. Lord, let me say that again. He's not well, just fighting you because you're saved. He's God. fighting you because you switched kingdoms. You haven't seen an enemy like an enemy you used to be friends with. Hmm. You haven't. Let, let me put it this way. The Bible says friendship with the world makes you God's enemy. Friendship with the world makes you God's enemy. Why would friendship with the world make you God's enemy? Because Jesus said, my kingdom, I'm talking about the kingdom tonight, uh, is not of this world. Uh, that's why you can't be conformed to this world. Uh, this world will throw you a parade and kill you at your own party. You can't be conformed to this world. Uh, this world will tell it to you and then turn around and tell it about you. you can't be conformed to this world because if they talk about other people to you, they'll talk about you to other people. You can't be conformed to this world because this world follows what's trending, but I follow the king because he is the king that reigns forever and ever into God be all the glory, all the honor, all the dominion, and all the majesty. Somebody just thank God that Jesus is king of kings. Thank you, Lord. So the devil said, I got to get you out the kingdom. I got to, I got to get you out the kingdom. I got to, I don't like the fact that you're in the kingdom of God. I don't like that because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. You, you're in the kingdom. And, and the only way I can get you out the kingdom is to make you think you don't belong to the king. I'm, I'm talking to somebody tonight. I don't know who you are, but, but, but he, he said, I, I, I can't stop God from claiming you as a son or daughter of God, but I, if I can get you to doubt who you are in God, then you'll still be in the kingdom of God, but you'll be anxious while you're still in God's kingdom. Lord, help me preach tonight. You'll be depressed while you're still in God's kingdom. You'll feel lonely while you're in God's kingdom. And, and sometimes if you're not careful, the enemy will have you thinking thoughts of suicidal ideation while you're on the winning side. Who am I talking to tonight? I'm talking to the people who are in the kingdom of God, but you don't always feel like a child of the king. You had a rough week. You're dealing with crazy family members. Things on the job not right. You got secret health issues and you don't want to be a burden to your family. But I came to remind you tonight, you don't have to feel like God's child to know you're God's child because the church is good at feeling him, but when you're a kingdom citizen, you trust them even when you don't feel them. When you're a kingdom citizen, you walk by faith and not by sight. So here comes Paul in my text tonight, 2 Corinthians 4, the scripture he read. He says, if our gospel be here, he said in his head to them that are lost. The difference between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of Christ is that the kingdom of darkness will blind you. It blinds you. And that's, that's why the unbeliever is not quick to come to Jesus because they're blinded to the fact that if you come on the king side, the devil will need permission from the king to do anything else to you. Lord, help me. They're, they're not quick to come to God because the, 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 the God, lowercase g, God of this world has made them think everything they need is in the kingdom of darkness. And Jesus said that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil, because they don't know that if you ever step into the light. Do I have any witnesses tonight? Your life was dark, it was gloomy, but you didn't think it was that dark 
because you was having a good time in Satan's kingdom. And that's what the devil does. He'll make you feel good in his kingdom and try to get you to feel bad while you're in the kingdom of God. But devil, I am more than how I feel. I'm a chosen generation. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a peculiar people. I am a child of the kingdom. Bible says if our gospel is hid, it is only hidden to those who are lost. And the thing about it is that because I'm in the kingdom of Christ, I got light. For Jesus is the light of the world. And I want you to know that when you stay with Jesus long enough, he will explain why you have to go through certain things you went through soon enough. Because there's something about walking in the light. In fact, you can see a snake better when you walk in the light. You can see your Judas is better when you walk in the light. You know who to deal with and who to leave alone when you walk in the light. When you walk in the light, Lord have mercy, that there's some things that used to bother you that don't bother you no more because my mind has been enlightened by the light of the world. He says, but... We're not lost because the same God who created the world, who started by saying, let there be light. He, he compares the creation to the new birth. Look at it. He says in verse six, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, that's the creation, has shined in our hearts, that's the new birth, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In other words, Paul is saying that God did to your heart what he did in creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, but the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Now, wait a minute. When the Bible says the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, the Hebrew meaning means God sat on the water. Y'all better stay with me tonight. It means God sat on the water. The first time I see the Holy Spirit mentioned in the Bible is when he's connected to water. Lord, help me preach on tonight. Creation began with the Spirit sitting on on the water. Lord have mercy. When I went to John chapter 4, Elder Bonet, I saw Jesus sitting on a well. Lord have mercy. When I went to Mark chapter 4, I saw Jesus in a watery boat. Lord have mercy. Help me teach tonight. When I went to Matthew 14, I saw Jesus walking on the water. Lord, there's something about Jesus. He's always by the water. Lord, the Bible said in heaven, there's a pure river of water. Let's talk about that. Notice something, people of God, that there's this connection between the spirit and the water. When God brought Israel out of Egypt, he could have brought them out through many ways, but he chose to take them through the water, through the Red Sea, because it was a shadow and type of how God would inaugurate you into the kingdom of God. Lord, help me teach tonight. So when he wanted to bring you into the kingdom of God, he says, you got to be born again of the water and of the spirit. That's why the enemy fights the baptism, because it is the kingdom's code of ethics that in order to get into the king's domain, you must go through the waterway. Lord, help me preach tonight. In order to get to the king's domain, you've got to do it like he said. Do it, for except you're born of the water and of the spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom, the kingdom, the king's domain, the kingdom of God. Let me digress for a moment. Paul says in verse seven, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the dichotomy right there. That's the discrepancy right there. I have a treasure in earthen vessels. Back in Paul's culture, 
everybody kept an earthen vessel in their house, but the moment it broke, it was considered useless. But God breaks us even while there's treasure inside of us so that his light can shine through the cracks of our broken pieces. I'm so glad tonight that Jesus is not just the king of eternity, but he's the king of my brokenness. Lord have mercy. I, I, I'm glad tonight that nobody can rule over my wounds like Jesus can. I, wanna, I, wa I want you to be careful. I want you to be careful because many people are wounded today because they're wounded and then they go to somebody else who's wounded themselves for healing. But the blind can't lead the blind because both fall into the ditch. I need somebody who I can go to with my wounds and they heal me everywhere I hurt. And that can only be done by the king of the kingdom for Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Only problem is I thought I was done with being brokenhearted after I became a kingdom citizen. I thought that when I came over to the Lord's side, I thought Kool-Aid would come out my water fountain. I thought when I came over to the Lord's side, everything would be great and wonderful and, 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 and I wouldn't have to worry about things I would used to worry and be anxious about prior to meeting Christ. What's the point of being in the king's domain and still have some of the same issues I had when I was in the world? Because this king fights for you. When you was in the kingdom of darkness, Satan fought against you. But in the kingdom of God, Christ fights for you. Can somebody, can we go again, unmute yourself and say, he fights for me. 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 Hallelujah. He he fights for me. And, and in fact, he fights for you when it looked like he's not even fighting. <laughs> because remember, Satan has wows, which is the Greek word for methodia, which means he has methods. But God has, God does not react to Satan. No, 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 no. God is proactive while Satan is reactive. The reason why Satan is reactive is because God is standing up for you and fighting for you. You're only being attacked because God already stood up for you on your behalf. In other words, Satan attacks you after victory. That's somebody's word right there. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that you can't seem to enjoy one moment because of something that happens the next moment and you want to be happy about this, but it feels too good to be true and you want to be excited about this, but you still got this to take care of? Every victory you get, you cannot allow the enemy to rob you of your peace of mind. Here we go. Y'all ready for this? Romans 14 and 17 tells me what the kingdom is. Romans 14 and 17 tells me what the kingdom is. I said Romans chapter 14, verse 17 tells me what the kingdom is. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Because if I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, that means I'm a kingdom carrier. There we go. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the fight that you're in right now, for what the devil is trying to bring against you right now, you got three tools to fight them with. You got righteousness, you got peace, and you got joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, wait a minute, preacher. That don't sound real military. I'm in a fight against Satan, and you just want me to be righteous, walk in peace, and in the joy of the Holy Ghost? Yes, because the world is seeking for peace. They call it protect my peace. But if you can protect it, it's not peace. Lord have mercy. The peace of God protects me. The peace of God surpasses human reasoning. Human logic goes deeper than sociology. 
psychology, philosophy, anthropology. Yes, the peace of God surpasses my understanding. Righteousness, peace. See, I thank God for joy on Sunday morning, but I need peace to go to bed on Sunday night. You'll be amazed at how many of us dance and shout on Sunday morning, but we walk the floor in our kitchen Sunday night because we have the joy of the Lord, but haven't learned the peace of God. Oh, let me go somewhere tonight. It's one thing to have peace with God, and it's another thing to have the peace of God. What do you mean by that? Romans 5 and 1 says, therefore, being justified by faith, I have peace with God. That's talking about salvation. But Philippians 4 and 6 says, let you not be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God. Lord have mercy. Peace with God means he's my savior. Check this out. Peace of God means he's my king. Lord have mercy. I come to tell you tonight that Jesus told the disciples, I give you my peace, not the peace of the world, because the world has a, has a peace that reels and rocks and shakes and is unstable. But baby, hear me good tonight. You ought to build your hope on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Ah, God, I thank you tonight. He says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. You're anointed. You're anointed. You, you're, you're anointed to lay hands on the sick and they recover. You're, but, but, but you go home to a, a nightstand of pills yourself. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. You, you pay your church dues faithfully. But when you get the mail, you don't even want to open the mailbox because you know your bills are going to have more zeros than your paycheck. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. People look at you and how you get through life and they admire your staying power. They admire your resilience, but they don't know deep down inside you're, you're frustrated and you're discouraged because we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Lord have mercy. You're a good preacher. You're a good preacher. The devil can't stop you from being a good preacher because that, that's a part of your treasure. But, but but he'll wait till you get in the parking lot in between the sermon and getting home and try to talk to your mind all the way home because we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Lord have mercy. That's why that's why Christianity sometimes seems to be, Lord have mercy, counterproductive because it seems like you're telling me I'm winning, but a part of me feels like I'm losing. You're telling me I'm going up, but I feel like I'm going down. You're telling me I'm ex selling, but I feel like I'm decelerating. You're telling me I can make it, and I feel like I'm already going through so much that I can't take no more. I got four things I'm going to leave with you, and I'm out of here. If you're going to be a kingdom carrier, you must remember these four principles that Paul outlines in verses eight and nine. To help you to survive the contradictions. The contradictions of how can I be so blessed and feel so cursed? How can I be up and feel down? How, how can I keep a good attitude after hearing bad news? How, how can I be a believer and they just cut my lights out? Four principles that Paul shows kingdom citizens in verse 8 and 9. He, he says in verse 8, uh, verse uh, 8, we are troubled on every side yet not distress. Trouble on every side, yet not distress. The word distress in the Greek here means to be camped in, crowded in, no way out. I'm troubled on every side. I go, I, 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 I go to my friends to get counsel about my family and, 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 and they got problems. I, I reach out to this one, they got their own issues. And I, I go here, I can't get no relief. And I, I go there, and I can't get no relief. He, he says, I'm troubled on every side. But even though I'm troubled on every side, he says, I'm not distressed. 
Because when you're in the kingdom, yes, you can be in the kingdom and have trouble. Yes, you can be in the kingdom and have a problem. I, I thank God that the Bible took out time to tell me this because most church folks act like because you serve the Lord, everything's all right. But if we were to be honest tonight and tell the truth and shame the devil, if the truth be told, there are some days in your life where you wonder where is God? There are some days when you wonder, Lord, when will this be over? There are some days when you wonder, Lord, I know I gotta suffer with you, but I didn't think it would be to this degree. He said, we are troubled on every side. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, I told you the Greek word for trouble means to be camped around, to be camped around. But I saw that word camp in the book of Psalms. Not only am I encamped with troubles, but I have angels that camp all around me. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Every time you think about the trouble that's trying to crowd you in for every trouble that's surrounding you, I come to tell you tonight, God's got an angel. For every trouble that you're facing, God got angels that are in camp all around you. Lord, have mercy. I need you to do it again. Here we go again. Unmute yourself, and I need more of you tonight to just holler, God's got angels. 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 Yes, he, he got yes, angels. angels. There's, not a, there's not a circumstance you're dealing with that God don't have an angel for. Lord, have mercy. There's not a battle you're facing that God don't have an angel for. Lord, have mercy. There, there's not a situation in your life that God don't have an angel for. Come here, Daniel. He said to King Darius, he said, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. For every lion then you face, God's got an angel. He's got an angel. He's got an angel. So number one, he says, I'm troubled, but not distressed. I'm troubled, but not distressed. Number two, he says, I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. Perplexed, but not in despair. The Greek word for perplexed is aporio. And aporio, when it talks about perplexed, it means I feel like I'm mentally at a loss. Lord, help me teach tonight. When he says I'm perplexed, in other words, I feel like I'm mentally losing this battle. I feel like I'm mentally losing my children to drugs. I feel like I'm mentally losing my marriage. I feel like I'm mentally going down in my career. See, the devil can't take the Holy Ghost from you, but he wants to take your mental state of mind. Lord have mercy. Sometimes the miracle is that I didn't lose my mind. Sometimes the testimony is is that I didn't lose my anybody glad you made it to fry day and didn't lose your mind. My God. It's just another day that the Lord has kept me. He kept me from all evil with my mind stayed on Jesus. I got a devil to fight, but my mind is on Jesus. I got hospital bills, but my mind is on Jesus. Bills got more zeros than my paycheck, but my mind is still, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind Stay on Jesus. Check this out. He says perplex, which is the Greek word aporio, which means I feel like I'm mentally losing. Check this out. But then he says I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. And the Greek word for despair is exoporeo. And exoporeo means a loss in reality. Don't go nowhere. Let's, let's rewind. The word perplexed means to feel like I'm mentally lost. The word despair means I did lose. I'm going to say it again. The word perplexed means mentally I think I'm losing. But the word despair means in reality I really did. Let's go back again. Paul says mentally it, we think we're losing. But in reality 
We're not. I came to tell you your mind is playing tricks on you. Your mind wants to make you think you really don't have the victory that Christ gave you. Your mind wants to make you think that you're really at a loss. Well, devil, if I did lose some things, and if I did lose some friends, and if I did lose some people, understand something in the world system you have to gain. But in God's system, the system of the kingdom, you gain by losing. Lord, help me teach tonight. In God's kingdom, whoever wants to save his life has got to lose it. But if you lose your life, you'll save it. In God's kingdom, gain begins with loss. How do you know you're a kingdom citizen is when you start losing old friends? How do you know you're a kingdom citizen when they stop inviting you out to places? How do you know you're a kingdom citizen when friends are few? How do you know you're a kingdom citizen when everybody you count, you can't count on? That's what lets me know I'm a kingdom citizen is that I lost a few things, but thanks be unto God, I didn't lose my mind. I didn't lose my faith. I didn't lose my dance. I didn't lose my joy. I didn't lose my hallelujah. I didn't lose my thank you, Jesus. He says, number three, to the kingdom citizen, I'm cast down, but not destroyed. To the kingdom citizen, I'm cast down. And, and that word cast down literally means thrown out. Thrown out, thrown to be broken. He says, I'm, I'm thrown out. L listen, listen, I want you to know tonight, God wants you to learn how to be okay with rejection. He wants you to learn how to be okay with the fact that you're going to see people, you're going to see some of your own people hanging out on Facebook taking selfies and they didn't even invite you but got the nerve to post a picture. Listen, you got to be, you have to understand, kingdom citizens get rejected by the world because our kingdom is not of this world and this world is not our home. I'm in it, but I'm not of it. I'm just passing on through. I'm just passing on through and I'm passing through because I got a reserved seat in the kingdom, I told you, stay seated. He says, I'm thrown, but I'm not destroyed. I'm not rich, but I eat every day. <laughs> I don't have it like that, but, but, but I, I have a nice size wardrobe in the closet. Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm, I'm a working class citizen. Lord, I'm not an upper class citizen. I'm a working class citizen, but I'm a royal citizen of the kingdom. Last but not least, every kingdom citizen, he says we're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. Persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I may feel forsaken, but I'm not forsaken. <laughs> forsaken. Wait a minute. Jesus used that word on the cross. Eli, Eli, lama sabbatine, which is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Mm. Lord, help me teach tonight. Help me teach tonight. Help me teach tonight. Jesus is God. Jesus is God without controversy. So when Jesus says, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? It was the flesh of Christ that felt abandoned by the spirit of Christ. And that's how we feel sometimes in our flesh. We feel like the spirit has left us. In our flesh, we feel like God is not with us. In our flesh, we feel like we don't have victory. No wonder Paul said, in my flesh is no good thing. But in the spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is, there shall be liberty. And I don't care what situation you find yourself in tonight, you will have liberty because you have the kingdom of God within you. 
I don't care if you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You're a kingdom carrier. I don't care if you feel alone and isolated. You're a kingdom carrier. Can I tell you, being a kingdom carrier don't always feel good. Being a kingdom carrier will make it feel like you have no friends in the world. But because you're a kingdom carrier, all things work together for the good of them who love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Because you're a kingdom carrier, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, God will condemn in judgment. Because you are a kingdom carrier, you have to learn how to be content in whatever state you're in. Because you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. I need everybody to unmute yourself for the final time and just shout, I'm a kingdom carrier. I'm a kingdom carrier. I'm a kingdom, I'm a kingdom carrier. carrier. Kingdom carrier. Now, wait a minute. I'm a kingdom carrier. My God, God bless your mother. My God. But check this out. And Elder Bonet, after I say this is in your hands, check. Check this out. The Lord said to me, he said, make sure you tell them this. When you start walking with God and you walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, you're a kingdom carrier. But somewhere between Satan's kingdom and walking in the kingdom of God and living like a kingdom carrier, check this out, don't go nowhere, you suddenly realize that I thought I was carrying the kingdom, but I'm learning that the kingdom, Lord help me preach tonight, is carrying me. Lord, I don't know how many of y'all knew the Clara Ward singers, but back in the 60s, they had a song that said, as pilgrims here, we sometimes journey. We often don't know which way to go, but there's someone to help us carry our heavy load. Don't you know God is able to carry you through? Lord have mercy. I thought I was carrying the kingdom, but the kingdom is what carries me. Lord, now unmute yourself for real this time and just holler, the kingdom is carrying me. The kingdom is carrying me. The kingdom is carrying me. Kingdom is carrying me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a oh, praise God. tonight. Come on, give God a praise tonight. Come on, come on, give him a praise. Yes, 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 yes. Give him Hallelujah. a praise tonight. Hallelujah. Give him glory tonight. Give the king some honor. The kingdom is carrying you. The king is carrying you. The king is carrying you. Is carrying you. God said to tell you, he's carrying you through every sickness, through every layoff, through every setback. Thank you, Lord. He's carrying, hey, hey, yes. he's Hallelujah. carrying you. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. He's carrying you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the grace that brought me safely Thank you, Jesus. And the grace that brought me safe thus far. His grace Hallelujah. shall lead me home. Yes, the God. king Hallelujah. is carrying you. Hallelujah. I don't care yeah. who left you. The king is still carrying you. I don't yeah. care what you're saying. You. The king is carrying you. I don't care how bad it looks. The king is carrying you. Yes, Lord. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. The king is carrying you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Into the hands of Elder Bonet. Hallelujah. He cannot see you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He got out of the Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank Thank the Lord for carrying us, uh, as uh, Elder Bracely has eloquently said. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, it's the Lord who carries us all. Amen. And, you know, I've actually seen illustrations like you, I'm sure, where uh, the shepherd will at times carry the sheep on his shoulder. And uh, there truly have been times when I needed to have that happen in my life. I'm sure you can feel the same way. And it's good to know that we have that good shepherd that has the type of shoulders that can bear the burdens that we have. As a matter of fact, as we do know, he said to cast our cares on him, for he cares for us. 
Amen. And why is that? As Elder Bradley Bracey was saying uh, throughout the course of the lesson, uh, it's because we are uh, kingdom citizens. Amen. And the Lord uh, wants us to be uh, citizens of his kingdom while the enemy is doing everything he can to get us kicked out, uh, to get our visas revoked, and uh, to have us excommunicated from that kingdom uh, so that we can somehow develop a form of leprosy to get be kicked out having to say we're unclean and have nothing to do with it and be no part of it. But thanks be to God that as we have seen through the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ, that he has the power and the wherewithal, uh, praise the Lord, to heal uh, the sick, uh, to, uh, to heal the leprosy, uh, to remove that which is deemed unclean uh, from our lives so that now we are considered clean, to show ourselves unto the high priest, this Melchizedek priest, praise the Lord, so that uh, he can determine that, yes, uh, this is a clean person, uh, praise the Lord, that even if we do slip up and mess up as we are likely to do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who, praise the Lord, uh, will speak on our behalf as the wonderful mediator. And why is he doing this? Because he wants us to be in the kingdom. He has a seat, praise the Lord, that is set aside just for us, a seat Praise the Lord that the Father uh, has uh, determined uh, based off of the works that we're doing, based off of the faith that we have, um, that we have earned. And I truly thank the Lord that we have a seat at the table. Uh, I'm looking forward to that wonderful marriage supper of the Lamb. And this takes place in the kingdom. Uh, amen. Uh, I, I like what you had said earlier, uh, praise the Lord, uh, Elder Bracey, you said that the kingdom of God is the body, the embodiment of Jesus Christ and how you know, it just goes to show how marriage is important because in order to become a part of this body of Christ, we've got to be unionized with Christ. Uh, we've got to be married to him. And uh, truly, uh, it is a blessing, amen, to be uh, considered uh, a portion of the bride of Christ. Um, and we have to make sure that we uh, do everything we can to, uh, to uphold that title. Uh, to uphold and, and be recognized by God as being a portion of his bride so that when he calls us into the marriage, amen, into this kingdom, uh, praise the Lord, uh, we will be able to hear that trumpet blow and to have our, and to be able to enter into and have our seat at that table uh, where we can then dine before Christ. So truly, we do thank the Lord, amen, for the lesson. There was a lot of juicy things that you had said. <laughs> I'm glad it's recorded. Amen. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite anybody, praise the Lord, if you have any questions for Elder Bracey or comments, please uh, feel free to bring it forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Any questions? Any comments? Praise the Lord. No questions. This is Sister Redwood. No questions. Hallelujah. But I praise God even for the message that came tonight. I was talking to my sister earlier and I was telling her how depressed I was becoming. And knowing that we're still in the body of Christ, but the things and the pressure, hallelujah, that comes upon us. And I just felt like I was going down. But you know, you might feel like you're going down, but he said that you are still in the kingdom. I thank God for the message because it uplifted me. Hallelujah. To know that no matter what comes, no matter what the enemy throws at us, hallelujah, we still have victory. And knowing that he, the enemy, cannot touch us unless the Lord gives him permission. I thank God for the message. I'm encouraged, hallelujah, to walk with Jesus. I'm encouraged, hallelujah, to go forward. Hallelujah, because I want to see Jesus for myself, but I want to see him in peace. You continue to pray for me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Is there anyone else who has a comment or a question? Uh, praise the Lord for Elder Bracey in Jesus' name. Wonderful lesson, Elder Bracey. Just knowing that the king is carrying us because the load gets so heavy, we cannot carry ourselves. But just to know, Hallelujah, that he's going to carry us through to the end. Praise God. Praise God for your session today. Oh, Thank you, Lord Tama. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, glory. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord, Elder Bracey. This is Deacon Barnes. I just want to say thank you 
You are an encouragement to our soul. You have always been an encouragement to the body of Christ. And I thank God for you, for your encouraging words. It is a timely word, timely word that we often need to hear constantly, day in and day out. And I praise God for you, nephew. I love you, man. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there anyone else who has a comment or question? Elder Bracey? Praise the Lord. Yes. I I have a um praise. I just thank God. Oh, hallelujah. What a powerful word in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God for the word and just to be on the prayer line. And um and is there any way that I could hear more of the word of his teaching, preaching? Um, if I have a number or uh if I could go to the YouTube, I don't know what church he's at or anything about him but i would love to hear more of his teaching Please. amen praise the elder bracy amen do you have a uh, uh any information you'd like to put out yeah. there <clears throat> yes you can follow us <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> you can follow us <clears throat> excuse me <y> all. <laughs> you can follow us on facebook at curtis bracy on instagram at the warfare preacher on TikTok at the warfare preacher i'm actually doing a whole series on the kingdom just preaching the gospel of the kingdom and people are being blessed because they are really learning the power that the kingdom of god gives them right now Amen. Did you, is Amen. It, it, um, if, if you don't go on the um facebook uh, can you go on the youtube it's uh yes yeah, she can go on you can go on youtube at Curtis Bracey, you can go on YouTube, yes. Okay, thank you so much. Amen. We are actually, uh, uh, the Central Jersey Bible Institute is uh, now taking the recordings and we're posting it up on our uh, social media pages as well. So this recording uh, will soon be online on our YouTube page, as well as our Facebook page. So if um, um, uh, you are not able to write down the information that Elder Bracey had just given you, uh, you can look this video up on the CJBI page on Facebook, as well as YouTube, subscribe, become a friend, um, and um, you can receive the alerts when we post up these videos. So uh, this information will be there uh, as well, in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Is there anyone else who has a question or comment? Praise the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, we do thank Elder Bracey. Amen for a wonderful uh, lesson. Oh, praise the Lord. So, yes, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Sister Green. I'm still a little hoarse from my surgery, but I really enjoyed this message tonight. And I have truly taken it all in. What a blessing. What a word. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. you for the wonderful lesson. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now, without further ado, I'd like to invite a prayer. Was there anyone else that had a comment or question? I don't want to miss anyone. Amen. Uh, okay. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to invite Elder Betts, the president of CJBI, as well as the pastor of the GRCC. Amen. For closing remarks and comments in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord and good evening to all, amen. Certainly the Lord is good, he is wonderful, and he is worthy to be praised to our instructor, preacher, teacher this evening, Elder Curtis Bracey. God bless you, sir. We appreciate you spreading the table tonight and allowing the Lord to use you to give us his word. Amen. And just listening to the responses just now to know that so many hearts have been touched this evening. We praise God. And I want to say this to you, uh, Elder Bracey. And I said it to someone in my family this week, your name. I brought your name up and I said, you know, I would love to hear Elder Curtis Bracey at the International Convocation as a preacher for the Firestarter Service. I believe you have that type of ministry that could affect those type of souls. So we keep you in our prayers. We appreciate you and thank God for you. God bless you. Keep on preaching and teaching, sir. Amen. I concur, concur with that. <laughs> I think you'd be great there. Amen uh and uh so we thank you sir we thank you for your ministry amen we thank you for allowing uh the lord to use you as a conduit to uh, to feed us this evening 
I pray, amen, that everyone uh, feels the way that everyone has acknowledged, uh, those that have acknowledged, uh, and they are walking away so much more satisfied, fuller in the spirit in Jesus' name. And praise the Lord. Uh, yes, praise the Lord. I just have one thing to say. Um, Elder Bracey did not tell you, but he has written books as well. So if you want to read some of his writings, you may do that as well. There are books on the shelf that you may purchase. Go to Amazon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Amen. You want to read off the titles real quick? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we wrote a book called Holy Spirit Therapy in 2021. Uh, last year, we wrote a book called Christ Confident. And on April 11th of God Willing Next Month, we have a book coming out called Temptation. So you, that, that, that's showing you how the enemy will tempt you to leave the kingdom of God. So good Temp book. Go get it in Jesus' Temptation name. Temptation is after your destiny. Temptation, your destiny signal. Uh -huh. Yes. And, and they can be purchased at Amazon as well as, I think, uh, Amazon, yeah. Amazon, Walmart, Barnes and Nobles, and Kobo. Amen. Amen. And um, Jesus Book and Gift, I believe, right? Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Again, we thank everybody for joining us. Um, and we pray you had a good time. Please join us again next week, uh, Thursday. We'll have our next uh, Central Jersey Bible Encouragement Series session. Amen. And without further ado, let us close out in Jesus name. I invite everybody to pray with me. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love and thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for feeding us this evening. We thank you for, for hearing from up on high. We pray, Lord God, that you will find that your manna that you've delivered unto us is falling within the good deep ground of our person that it may bring forth the fruit that you're looking for. We pray, Lord God, that that fruit will come forward, Lord, as we know that that is your hope that we may in the end, Lord, be everyone be a person who has received every good thing that you have to give unto us. We love you. We thank you. Now that we're leaving from this call, please continue to lead us by your spirit. Continue to speak to our hearts and continue to educate us on this subject, as well as all of the other subjects that you would love to teach us about. Lord, keep us from the enemy and his will and his wiles and his ways. Order our steps and camp the heavenly angels about us. Lead and guide us into all truth. Keep us rapture ready. We love and thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you again, sir. Thank you God again. Bless you.